Today I'm going to do a review on OSH stencils. Since I just built the toaster reflow oven, it's time to change up a little bit of my game from using a soldering pen to actually using soldering stencils, such as this one I've just ordered. So let me get everything set up on the table for you, and this way you get a better view and I can show you. Just remember, of course, this is the first time I've ever messed with a solder paste stencil, so there might be a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, here's our actual stencil itself. Uh, for $5, for a one-time fee of $5, you can buy these little L brackets. They're basically an acrylic L bracket. They got their own little name printed on top here, underneath the blue tape. Basically what you do is you tape the top one onto the table, put your circuit board inside, then you bring this other L bracket, push up next to it, tape that down, and that keeps the circuit board from moving around. Then you take one piece of tape, put it on the one side of the stencil. This way when you run the um, specialized solder paste spreader over top of it, none of the holes move around and it stays perfectly centered on the pads that you do. And it's also repeatable. So once you've scraped over with solder paste, you can lift it up, take a pair of tweezers, take out the circuit board, put another one of the exact same one in there, and just keep going again. So it's good for limited production. Today I'm going to be trying it with Chip Quick. No clean, lead-free solder paste. Uh, which I have squirted out into this little container, so this way it's a little easier to work since I'm not going to be using the needle. I'm going to be using the solder paste squeegee, and you can't exactly do it very well if I had a needle on here wouldn't work right. So let me get this set up and we're going to put a nice little layer on here, pull the board out and bring it up real close and see how accurate this really is. Now I probably have way too much solder paste on here. Actually I'm pretty sure I do. But like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. You got to do this in two swipes. The first one basically covers everything and the second one goes back over and scrapes off the top and gets off the excess. Yeah. Definitely way too much. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can get the circuit board out of this mess. Just flip this back over. And I got this in here really nicely. Okay, now we can see the solder paste actually applied. And it came out extremely well. Everything is perfectly lined up from the... SOT25, the resistor, the inductor, the capacitor right over here, my diode pads, my other resistor over here. Let me see if I can pick it up and turn it sideways here. And you can see there's a very thin layer that is very uniform on there. Now when it comes time to actually clean your stencil, all you need is paper towel, and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Put a liberal, but not doused the ever-living heck out of it, on your towel. Take your stencil, get rid of the tape. And just gently rub it around a little bit on the actual paper towel. Both sides. I think I put too much rubbing alcohol on that paper towel. But it gets all the solder paste right back off and it's ready to use again and again when you're ready to do another production run. Same thing with your tools, your little L brackets, your handy dandy solder paste spreader that they give you. So for this being my first time ever using a solder stencil, I'm definitely gonna keep ordering from them Trust me, they haven't paid for an endorsement or anything else. It's actually a very good product. Um, normally it costs about $30 or $40 from what I've researched for a stainless steel stencil. They're good if you're going to run three, four, five hundred 500 
circuit boards through it and it has a lot more longevity. But for running 50, 100 boards or even if you're just prototyping and you need an easier way to spread your solder paste on your pads, these Captain ones are absolutely perfect and you can't beat the price. For 1 to 12 square inches, they're only charging 60 cents per square inch and then the price goes down as your square inch, your surface area, increases. They do have a $5 minimum order, so this way they can at least break even or make a little bit of money, but you cannot beat the price. But I bought this stencil, another stencil for version 3.0 that I'm prototyping right now, and these uh, circuit board holders. I think the whole order came out, shipped to me over onto the East Coast for $11, $12. So the next time, I never have to order these again. These will be good forever. So. Next time, I just got to make sure my order comes up to $5, or if your order is less than $5, they will round it up for you to $5 if you only need one stencil and mail it out to you. So their website is oshstencils.com. Go check him out. He's constantly improving the website, and it works beautiful for the hobbyist like me or for doing small production runs, and it's very cost-effective. Thanks. If you have any questions, leave them down below.